Hey, this is Chuck with Metalwani, and I am talking to Dan Chewy Mongrain from Voivod. Dan, how are you doing? Pretty good yourself. Nice to meet you, Chuck. It's great to meet you, Dan. I'm a, I'm a huge fan, so this is is quite an honor to talk with you. It's a pleasure, my friend. So the uh, so Voivod's 14th album called The Wake is coming out on September 21st. Uh, this is really a magnificent album. I, I really love it. I've been listening to it all week. It's I think. Current fans are going to dig it, and I think uh, anybody that really loves uh, experimental, progressive edge music is going to dig it. Um, when when you're writing an album like this, do you think of it as being progressive metal, or do you shy away from that kind of categorization? Um, it's hard to tell because I I, I mean I, I always wonder why we need labels, really. <laughs> But I, I guess humans are putting everything into small boxes, and it helps him, you know, in, in everyday life. But um, for me, it's it's a Voivod album, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and that means a lot because uh, as a fan uh, from a young age, uh, and and all the fans of Voivod would would know what I mean. I mean, uh, it's it's either I mean it's it's both metal and proggy and psychedelic and and uh, experimental and uh that that and we, ne we never know uh as a fan when i was a kid i i, I would wait for the next voivod album with excitement because i would not know what they they would come up with right you know, <laughs> and lyrically and that's what makes it very exciting uh, about that kind of band and i would I was always into that kind of, you know, excitement, and that's what I'm looking for when I discover uh, unique uh, sounding bands. Yes. So uh, that's, I, I guess, that's what we tried to do, Rocky and me, as as a, as being the, the newer member uh, and, and composer to the band. We 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 would want to we try to create what we want want to he hear as a new Voivod album as a fan. Cool. So when you guys were um, in the studio going to record The Wake, did you have every song completely composed or did you improvise while you guys were recording? Uh, no, recording was... Um, the, the composition were pretty much completed. Uh, what happened, the process was I would write uh, recorded lots of ideas uh, on tour and at home, even with bass sometimes, but never uh, add the drums or vocals on it. Mm -hmm. I would bring it to the rehearsal space and we would jam around the ideas and, and everybody's free to try whatever works the best with the ideas. And sometimes, you know, with, while playing the idea, the, the the groove would change from this initial state and it would transform and I I would have to modify the riff to <laughs> get the groove and that's the, the magic that's where the magic happens where everybody gives their own personality to to an idea and, and once you put the idea out there it's not yours anymore it's everybody's it, it, it exists on its own so uh, the goal was to sculpt this idea sculpt the air collectively with all our own personality and and makes make it uh, make it a, a voivod song together and and uh, make make uh, you know try to put to try to um, um, make everybody works at its best and and that's i think that works that worked very very good because we have good communication there's no ego in the way there's no argument there's only discussion between us uh -huh. and in the end the song wins you know the song is asking you for very precise needs and and if you find the if you if you're aware and you listen to to it needs you you feed it with the right St uh, right ingredients and, and, and it becomes a uh, it's alive really it's, right it's, yeah yeah I mean that's that's pretty interesting I mean so you guys um, are basically growing those songs like somebody has a seed and you guys all are adding your own ingredients to it to, to build it up totally that's the exactly the way I see it I think I think it's alive you know it's waves it's physically alive it exists 
and and we organize the waves and the rhythms and and in in a way that uh, resemble us and, and and, and, and that's, that's very, very unique when you have that kind of collective um, chemistry. Uh, it, it's, it's really, really, really interesting and, and enjoyable to be uh, part of this, this kind of pro creative process. Yeah, that, that, that does sound awesome. Um, there are so many layers on songs such as The End of Dormancy and uh, or, or like Always Moving. Do you ever think while you guys are writing a particular piece how the band will be able to perform it live? <laughs> that's, that's, we're we're going to know that soon. <laughs> I mean, we played the songs in, in, this, in their entirety in the rehearsal space. The only song to answer your previous question that was not finished writing was the last one, which is the longest one, and I wrote it all at home when uh, when away was in the studio recording the rest of the album but away is a very very fast record uh, recording artist <laughs> he's uh, a after, after three days uh, everything was done you know sound check wow good takes and 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 he's a pretty much uh, pretty much of a one take guy you know he, he just play the song from start to finish and that's it <laughs> and he does it like two two or three times each song and that's it you know wow. there's not uh, much editing going on and it's it's natural and the, so so yeah i had this beginning of song which was like two minutes and I was, you know, working in college at the same time and having a, a TV gig and stuff like that. So I, I didn't have much time. Uh -huh. But in, in a weekend, just before, the, I mean, the drum session were finished and I, and they were waiting for me <laughs> to have the song. So I took my bass and my guitar and I finished the song. But my idea was to take all the main themes and riffs and melodies from all the other songs of the album and do a recap in in one uh, extra song with its own identity as well you know and it's, yeah. it's riffs so what you have is you have a, a a whole song with links that goes from one part of a previous song to another part of the next song in a, chrono a chronological way and then snake had to figure out uh with part of vocals from which song to put over and her riff from another song and it was kind of a puzzle but all connected you know yeah and, uh, and uh, so and we received the tracks and he, he tracked the drums so i didn't know what to expect because we never tried it in, in at the jam space and it it become uh, very like amazing and <laughs> Uh, the first time I heard it, I was like, "Wow!" You know, yeah, yeah. surprise, great, great surprise. And um, and uh, then uh, Snake uh, figured out how to make a sense of all this. And and uh, in the end, I I was hearing some strings at the end, you know, in my head, mm -hmm. and I thought, "Oh no, more work." <laughs> <laughs> so I uh, I take, took my pencil and start to write a violin, two violins, viola and cello part uh, for a three minute uh, of music at the end of the piece for giving a, like a, a more spiritual, elevating ending to the album. Um, so I, we're, I, I'm really, really proud and we're really, really excited about the, the whole thing. You know, we worked very, very hard. Yeah, uh, the song you're mentioning is uh, Sonic Mycelium, and uh, actually I actually had a question about that because uh, one of the things I like about metal is that it, it seems like it always gives you this opportunity to learn, and so when I saw the title, I was like, what is mycelium? So I had to, I had to research and figure out what that word was, and it turns out it's, it's part of a fungus or a bacteria colony that absorbs nutrients, and I was, yes. won and I was wondering... Um, have you guys ever thought of the music of Voivod as a matrix through which the band feeds upon the mental energy of the fans? Ah, I guess music is, uh, is about that as well, huh? for yeah. any kind of music. I mean, it's the exchange and the communication between um, a generator of, of art and a receptor of, of your art. And that's the, the sharing and the... the uh, flowing energy between both that makes it you know uh, alive I guess 
Yeah. And, uh, and yes, totally. I, I didn't see it that way, but you're totally right. I think mycelium might uh, might be a good image of that kind of exchange. And uh, yeah, and I'm, I'm happy that you you look for the word because it's it's uh, it was my idea to 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 bring this because I'm a mushroom. Uh, I like to pick up mushroom a lot. <laughs> the woods and uh, I was fascinated by how the uh, the soil was made with the spider web of, of organic matter yeah. in, in which plants and trees and mushrooms communicate and grow and and it, it's thousands of kilometers of that you know everywhere on the under the earth yeah and I thought sonic mycelium sonic like the sound the waves the music all connected into a song from the previous songs and it, it, it all makes sense as, uh, as a poetry you know metaphoric kind of thing yeah it, it totally fit when i saw that and, and found out what that word meant i was like oh yeah it's that's what it is because it's pieces <laughs> of all those things Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so uh i really love the song spherical perspective uh, perspective um those big open octaves and that uh tumultuous section that leads into the solo uh, it sounds like it'd be uh, that it's one, one challenging to play, but also fun. What song yeah. on the new album is your favorite? Oh my God, I don't know yet. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm very proud of all of them. I mean, uh, and and your perspective, you know, as, uh, of listening to it and playing it is different. So sometimes you 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 one of the songs is your favorite because you like to pl play it. Mm -hmm. but you listen to it. It may it might be another one, <clears throat> so I'm in conflict of interest really uh, when it comes to my own compositions. But uh, I'm very proud of the, of uh, Sonic Mycelium, as we talked about yeah. in a, a, a spherical horizon, uh, which is a very more spacey kind of psychedelic uh, uh, vibe. Uh, I really like. Uh, uh, I don't even remember the titles. <laughs> <laughs> Was uh, it, uh, actually, beings, which is the most yeah. most forward of the of the album, like an appetizer for the rest of the album, and I I, I kind of big uh, eye conspiracy as well for the yeah. old school kind of vibe here and there, and and as well as more modern stuff in it, and the black metal section with violins in, in the in the middle is kind of of cool too. Yeah, that is really cool. So, uh, Voivod has, you know, you guys have been making a unique metallic imprint on the world for 35 years. Mm. Um, what keeps you guys inspired and motivated to create new music? I think it's uh, intrinsic to, to artists that it's a need, really, to express, uh, express what we've accumulated over some, some period of time, you know? Mm -hmm. and, uh, we're inspired with, but by what's going on on the earth, uh, uh, the, the the natural disasters or the ecological disasters, uh, the way the tensions between cultures or, or countries, or basically the cover, the art cover art was the four of us looking at the dying planet, which goes into a kind of vortex, you know. Uh, it's not going really well for humanity right now. Right. Uh, the, the earth is about to wipe us off the surface, which might not be a bad thing, uh, <laughs> you know. So right. we try, we'll try to tour it before it, it, it hits <laughs> something. But that, yeah, that's uh, that's kind of the inspiration. Uh, and there's beauty also, you know. It's yeah. not only ne negative. I mean, nature is generous with us. Uh, uh, you know, I, I do a lot of bicycles and, and, and it becomes a cycle, you know, a mm -hmm. rhythm and you forget about everything and it becomes a kind of meditation and I do that in the, on the countryside so sometimes I stop by a river, I go, I, go, uh, I go dip in the river and then, you know, and all that, all, everything you experience is a part of your personality and inspiration and influence, it's not only music, it's you know, most of the time you don't listen to music, so I, I think we 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 are we might not be that much conscious about what influences us. Right. Do you get Do you ever get to uh, have a point in uh, where you feel that the music industry is a grind and you just don't want to do it anymore? 
Uh, music industry and art are two separate things. I mean, uh, it can be hard sometimes to deal with one to make the other. <laughs> <laughs> But it's, uh, you know, um, we're, we've been really in good hands with Century Media and uh, the fans, the long time fans, you know, 35 years. Yeah. And, yeah. and the Voivod fans are very loyal and good supporters and they, they will buy some merch when we're playing shows. They you know we need the, the, the kind of support to continue to go on and they are pleased to do so, you know, be part of this experience and uh, and uh, you know it's uh, sometimes it's a necessary so to speak evil right uh, to 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 be part of an industry uh, but most of the time is very positive and maybe since streaming happens it makes it more difficult for every artist uh, and it's it has to change at some point you know yeah, uh, that's it, it that is, yeah, that's pretty ridiculous. The how that it works because the artists are not getting anything really. The artists look just to give you an example with uh, numbers. Uh, one of the songs I wrote on Target got a hundred thousand plays, and I had eight cents out of it. Oh my god! <laughs> so you know, there's you know nothing to earn from that except for being listened to for free or almost right. but I'm complaining in or here because every every bands every artists are in the same position about that yep. but uh, it's something's wrong let's say something's wrong in the in, in that mentality yeah um, so what are the plans for um, boy vibe for touring as far as uh, coming out and playing the new music well, we have uh, we we are honored to be part of the next Psycho Fest in Las Vegas uh, in in a week or in ten days on the August eighteenth, and we're gonna meet some friends and, and other bands there and, and fans as well, and we're really really psyched about that, and we're gonna play Winnipeg in Canada on the twenty fifth, and then we hit uh, the road. We go run across the ocean and go to Europe for almost two months. Uh, very lengthy, uh, extensive tour wow. of uh, 36 or 40 shows. I don't, I'm not sure, but uh, from September 7th to October 20th. And it's, uh, we can't wait to, to be on the road and play new music. And the album, is, we're going to come out when we are in Zurich. So uh, it's going to be very exciting. <laughs> that will be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so, Dan, I, I just have uh, one more question for you. Um, sure. Wh what do you uh, like to have for breakfast? <laughs> I didn't expect that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm a, I'm a fan of Japanese food, so rice, fish, and miso soup, and um, uh, fermented soybeans that I all do by myself. Oh, really? Wow. Do you make your own uh, tempeh? I, I make natto, which is a Japanese version of fermented fermented soybeans. Uh, I think tempeh is more uh, Korean. Yeah. Uh, and natto is uh, not like a solid fermented uh, fermented soybean, but more uh, of uh, uh, the beans uh, are in a kind of uh, jelly-like texture, which <laughs> and it smells like a fart. But I. Think <laughs> Awesome. It's, it's very healthy, you know. When it doesn't smell good, it means it, it's healthy. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Well, <laughs> Dan, thanks so much for talking with me. Thank you, Chuck. It was a pleasure, and uh, we need you guys, uh, guys like you, to promote and to support the scene for sure. Thanks for your work. Oh, thank you. Take Cheers. Care. Yeah, see ya. <laughs>